Okay, uh, we're back again. About 20 minutes went by. We exposed the plate. Now I've taken it off the from under the light. As you can see, it's still green. So what you do now is put it down upside down for a minute or two so, so it doesn't expose anymore. And you take the sodium hydroxide and you pour about yo much shot glass, half a shot glass in the water. Uh, that's maybe too much, about a quarter of a shot glass. That's what you're about. about a quarter of it, okay? And it turns the water like a yellow color. Now you put this in, just drop it in there. And let it sit there for a couple of minutes. And you'll see it start to uh, come up. Now it's, you know, water. No particular formula. And uh, you take the clean acid brush and you just start to brush it on the top, very lightly on the top. And it'll start to develop it and it'll take away all of the uh, resist that you don't want there. That, that's where you want the fluorochloride to etch to, etch in. So you wait and it's just like, a, like, like developing a picture. Put a black and white picture in, it's blank. First thing you know, there it is. Guy's raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Amazing. And so you just keep, you work it, you know, you just keep putting it in there and eventually it'll come start the show. You wait. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with this. I made uh, builder's plates, make number plate, um, little identification plates make parts for um, like the covers that I made for the um, electrical boxes they were square and it had PRR and some X number they, everything was on the PRR was neck number with an X X takes so a while it's, it's basically like an acid too it's got to eat away the, um, the resistance on there and that, that shows that the resistance is on good if it doesn't come off too easy that's what you want uh, and then you then you take your time with a little fine sharpie, and then you can fix it up a little bit. There's something missing, or very carefully uh, fix it up, and uh, then you're ready to uh, put it in the ferric chloride. And what I generally do is somewhere where it's not going to be seen, I drill a little hole in the corner, and then I hang it. And I use a stainless steel wire, and I hang it in that uh, bin that you see the plastic container thing with the bubble or in it. I stick it down in there. Now one thing about that is while I'm thinking about it is that uh, you don't want to leave that bubbling by itself. You want to keep a good eye on it because it could over bubble. I, funny story is that I when I first started making the etchings I put some fire chloride in and started bubbling and I said ah I'm going to wait here and let it go. And I went out to the store got something and he came back and it was all over the floor. So it took me quite a while to clean it up, but it, uh, it, it does clean up, and uh, it's starting so to come it's now. It's starting to come, come a little come bit, out, but it's, it's not eventually going to come. Little by little, it's going to develop. Take your time. It's a process you don't want to rush it. All right. Anyway, it's all been developed now. Sodium hydroxide, and that also fixes uh, it from any further light damage. So you can actually leave this like this, put it somewhere, and you do a bunch of them, and they don't really expose anymore. It won't keep continue to develop. Now on this one here, there's been a couple of little flaws in it. I take my ordinary sharpie pen and then to just color it in. Just. Uh, just fill it in with the, the black ink and that, that works the same exact way very carefully straight edge on it sometimes. Jack B, you like this, using the Sharpie. 
is ready to go. I'll show it to you up close. See all the little etchings on it? Keep turning it so you can see. Now everything that you see there is copper will etch away. And what that's going to create is a hatch pattern. Just like the prototype was kissed. It's going to look exactly like it. Okay, so now... And then I'm going to take it after I've really paired up any little flaws in it. And... Um, Went over it a couple times with the pen, make sure it was black as possible. And so no no copper showing through at all. I did the edge a little bit, paint that. So it uh, doesn't etch on there. Now, some people have asked me, how do you make these plates and get the lettering so deep? Well, how I've done that is um, I etched it down a few minutes. About a half an hour started to show the the lettering. I took it out, washed it off, and then very carefully, a lot of time consuming, went around each letter with the sharpie and painted on the side of each letter. Continued to etch it, goes a little bit deeper, do the process over and over until I got it about fifteen thousand steep. And then you take a, a file, you know, and just file over the top of it, smooths out the top of the letters. And then, of course, when you paint it, you paint it, spray it, and then just very lightly with some 400 grit sandpaper, just go over it, and it shines up the letters, and then you can see that the, it raises the letters out. Drill it, whatever. You have a little. I even made little dimples where it had to be drilled, so I didn't have to worry about punch marking it. There was like a little bit of a detent there. Just so went with the drill and drilled them, and that was my holes for the for the screws. And uh, worked out pretty good. Um, I think the process is pretty neat. Uh, I've done a lot of different items with it. Uh, one, how would I? Where would I get this step? I'd have to have somebody uh, engrave it. This is photo engraving. Same thing. It's engraving. It's cutting into the metal, but I'm using chemicals. And I think it's pretty cool. So um, the next phase of this will be to actually submerge this in the flaric chloride and um, the etching process will then take place and then once that's done then we're going to go on to uh, mounting it on the brass and uh, machining it to make the steps.